The learning framework is going to be a guide for the district to really define what learning looks like for Gregory Portland ISD. It's a document that is going to be able to provide our district with coherence and clarity so that we're all on the same page and we're all serving our students um, in the same manner. I think in the past, we've never really defined any expectations. We've never really said, this is what good learning looks like. This document provides that um, for everyone, for the community, for um, teachers, for our students. A new teacher coming in can pick up and um, run with. A veteran teacher that's been here will say, oh, these are things that we've been doing. Yes, it's all things that we've been doing, the great things we've been doing, and it will provide that coherence and clarity for all staff so that we're all moving the needle, all moving towards that same goal in the district. I think it's great. I, I like the idea that we're finally going to have something that I don't think we've had before, and that's alignment from campus to campus, from elementary all the way through high school, um, so that everybody's got an idea of how we do what we do at GPISD. Uh, teachers would feel comfortable walking in knowing that there is representation across the board for, for every subject area, every um, activity within the framework, and also just knowing what the expectation is. I think we all feel comfort when we know what's expected of us and, and what, what people want us to do. Culture um, came together out of the task force as a need when we went through the first part of the learning framework and said, what do we want for GP students and how do we want to teach them? So when we spoke to stakeholders, we were really talking not just about academics, but we were talking a lot about the why and the how we do our learning, how we interact with people, and culture came up as a principle, a guiding principle from everyone's input. Because we're really talking about how we talk, how we think, and how we behave and act around education in GP. Um, this is going to be something, it's going to be something small but grows and extends to everything we do in GPISD and in Gregory Portland in our communities. I had the ability to go to different campuses and see culture in action there and I was extremely um, pleased at what I saw on each campus. I soon will have a middle schooler in a couple of years and I was able to see the culture there. High school had amazing culture. It was a very enlightening experience. I learned a lot and it was extremely positive and I'm looking forward to where this will lead us. I was on the Curriculum Instruction and Assessment Committee and uh, my experience was wonderful because I got to work with other um, employees within the district at the elementary and secondary level. Um, analyzing the data at the district level um, definitely allowed us to see the alignment across all campuses. Um, working with my instruction team specifically, we were able to collaborate and, and share what, what we noticed um, in different positions. We had a teacher um, elementary position um, that she was on part of um, on the part of our committee as well as uh, academic dean at the high school and so the thought process going through um, and collecting that data was just something that's needed for a district and we just visited several different teachers and we popped in for 10 minutes we didn't want to be an intrusion and we just simply watched the kids were welcoming, the teacher was welcoming, we didn't, we said don't stop class, just keep going. And we saw how GP has built the steps, these steps all the way up that we weren't even aware of. I saw kids in elementary learning the basics of debate, which I love to teach in my class. I'm going, wow, I thought you guys had never done that. And it was, uh, we all came away just utterly amazed at all the things that we've learned and we, we could use and that, um, they're doing that we're building on. We take in the ideas of what each school is doing and what each level is doing and try to put it in a framework that anyone can use. So you get to look at what every committee is creating and say, I like this, I'll take that, I like this, I'll take that. Um, as an example, I have on my wall now something that I saw at the elementary school. It was a poster that said, don't say I don't know, say this. 
And so I have a poster that says, don't say I don't know, say my best guess is, uh, do you want opinion or fact? Um, can you ask it another way? And, and it, helps, it helps us say, gosh, I never even thought about that. What are the kids struggling with? Because the kids and the world have changed so much since COVID, and I hate saying that, but it really has. And we have to try to help each other move forward, and that's what this le learning framework is doing. Um, so for as part of the learning framework, I was on the stakeholder engagement and designing the access for the framework. Um, some of the things that we did was to create a timeline and a method for how we would make sure that stakeholders were able to access, find, and use the framework once everything was created and that we had a pathway for everything to be inserted in a timely fashion so that the actual design of it wouldn't hold back everything once the framework was created. I feel that we created a good product that will be able to last us for many years. You know, sometimes it's about the journey, not the destination, if that makes sense. And first I'll talk about the destination, the outcome. I think the outcome's great. I think we've really created something that's GP branded, that's personalized to what we do, that's reflective of the good teaching that already happens here. It's reflective of the of the needs of our of our community and of our of our students. So I think that part's cool. I think it's gonna look great. Um, I think it's going to roll out very nicely, to be perfectly honest. But the journey part of it I find even more interesting because we had a lot of teachers that were involved in this committee. And a lot of teachers during this process went into other classrooms, other staff members' classrooms. And it just became, I don't want to use the word joy, but I will, it became a joy to listen to these teachers talk about, you know, just the power of going in and seeing other people teach, you know, that, you know and, and, and what that meant to them and experiencing and exploring the good things that other people, other teachers are doing in the classrooms that maybe they hadn't even thought of, you know, or maybe they had thought of it, but it was just more, it was just reaffirming to know that these things are going on across the, across the campus. And so that was kind of the journey part of it. We definitely discussed um, all the practices that would need to go in place to implement the timeline in an effective way. And so some of the things that we talked about would be that it has to be implemented in chunks. It has to start small. We're going to start with our strengths. And one of the things that are, uh, it's consistent throughout the entire implementation would be uh, stakeholder feedback. We have to have that stakeholder feedback to know if we're doing too much, if we're doing too little. And so the great thing about the implementation is that it is flexible and it's editable. So if we decide as a district or as a framework that we're trying to push too much too soon or maybe not enough, uh, that we can always go back and make those changes. And um, it's important to know that it's not set in stone. So it's always got room for improvement and changing and that's the point of the stakeholder feedback. Any teacher or task force member that you talk to now after having been through the process um, and doing all that legwork will tell you that it's going to be very impactful. And um, I've told several people in the district that this is the component that we needed to take GP from good to great. And I truly believe that. For me, I'm gonna highly encourage everybody to commit to giving the framework the effort and energy it needs so that it can be successful. Don't just buy in, but actually commit to it as a document and as a guide for us as a district. Understand that it's it's not just another thing added on to us. It is something that is gonna collect everything else and have a one place for us to go to for what we should be doing as teachers. I'm excited because it's gonna give us what we've been needing. Um, the, the expectations, um, some of the unknowns, the unanswered, well, how do you do this at your campus? You know, this is how we do it at TM Clark or at WC Andrews or SFA. Um, just having that alignment where everybody knows this is the way we do it in GPISD, um, that's gonna set us apart from all the other districts. One of the takeaways that I had was the idea that no student should be able to feel like they won the lottery because they went to a particular school, had a particular teacher, but that every student could walk away feeling like they won the lottery because they go to GPISD. It's actually our hearts and souls poured into something that we want to be able to help teachers improve their education, and I'm going to be using this next year. I mean, I don't, I don't use this stuff. I'm going to be using it next year not because we simply made it and said here it is, but because it's, it's really good.